welcome to the next lecture on the course descriptive statistics with our software up to now what we have done we have considered the aspect of frequency distribution in the last couple of lectures and before that we had uh, two introductory lectures where we had learned that uh, once we get the data in our hand then there are two types of tools that can be applied uh, one is graphical tool and another is analytical tool so in the last uh, two lectures where we had done the frequency distribution that was the first step when you would like to make an arrangement with your data so that the data is compatible to be exposed to the graphical and analytical tools so now in this uh, lecture and in the next couple of lectures first i will try to target at the graphical tools and after that i will continue with the analytical tool so now the first question comes why should we use the graphical tools so we know that graphics are very easy to understand and that is why we take the help of graphics to extract and to understand the information which is contained inside the data now we are going to use the information extracted from graphical tools as as well as analytical tools together so now first let me try to explain you why do we need this graphical tool so now if i say suppose i want to convey that a person is happy or sad well you can explain in say several sentences that uh, how the happiness will look like or how the face of a sad person will look like and so on but in case if you try to use the smileys what do you see here that the mood of a person is very easily conveyed by these three smileys just by looking at this structure means anybody can say very quickly that this is indicating the happiness and this one blue one means anybody can say after looking at this face that the face is sad and in the green face in the middle one means anybody can have a look and can say very easily that this is reflecting that the person is okay similar is the information that is expressed in graphics mode as we had discussed that when we start in statistics we have only a sample of data and the size of the data can be very small or it can be very very large and each and every data contains some information but we want to have the information in some combined way and that is why our first target was frequency distribution now once again we are trying to combine the information in some graphical way and we would like to condense the information in the form of a graphic so that we can have some idea about the information that is hidden inside the data so there are various types of uh, advantages the graphics can explain the hidden information very compactly and very quickly which is very easy to understand by a common person nobody needs much stronger knowledge of mathematics and statistics to understand behavior of a smiley face or the behavior of a curve one can easily understand it so that is the advantage once again i would say that whenever you are trying to conduct any statistical analysis there are various types of graphics that can be used but sometimes there is a myth that unless and until you use more number of graphics the analysis is is not good rather i have heard people saying that uh, that, that the goodness of a statistical report depends on the number of graphics higher the number of graphics better is the report well this is wrong means if somebody has some problem it does not mean that the, if the doctor gives more medicine then the doctor is good the doctor is good if he gives the appropriate medicine in appropriate quantity same is the message in the statistics also we have to use appropriate graphics 
and say appropriate number of graphics also. Right. And the use of appropriate graphics and appropriate number of graphics will only give us the correct information in a more fruitful way. So, in statistic, there are various types of graphical tools that can be used. There are two dimension plot, three dimension plot, there are scatter diagram, there is pi diagram, histogram, bar plots, stem and leaf plot, and there are box plot, and there are many, many more. And particularly, with the advent of softwares, these graphics have become very popular because they are very easy to create and they can be created in a very small time actually. Similarly, just like all other softwares, this R also has a capability to create the graphics. Not only create the graphics, but it also gives you an option to save the graphics in different mode like as postscript format, JPEG format, PDF format and so on. So, in R, there is a long list of graphics that can be created. For example, same plot which you have learnt earlier like a bar plot, pie chart, box plot, group box plot, scatter plot, co-plots, histogram, normal QQ plot and there is a long list. All sort of two dimension, three dimension, colored, there are many, many possibilities and it simply depends on your capability that how many graphics you can learn. Well, I am going to explain here some selected type of graphics. My idea is not to teach you the graphics. My idea is that I will try to show you how one can create the graphics in our software and what are the different options which are available. And then I will try to give you here several example and I believe that after that you will be confident enough to learn how to create any other graphics according to your need. Well, so let me try to start here with one of the very basic graph. This is called bar diagrams. So this bar diagram is essentially used to visualize the relative or absolute frequencies of the data or the relative or absolute frequencies of the values that are observed for a variable. And this bar diagram, this will consist of one bar for each category. And one of the characteristic or one of the very important characteristic of the bar diagram is the height of the bar. Height of the bar is simply proportional to the frequency or to the relative frequency, right. And the height of each bar is determined by the absolute frequency or the relative frequency of the respective class and this height is shown on the y axis. Whenever we are trying to create a bar like this, then this bar has two things. One is the width of the bar, this is here and another is the length or height of the bar. So, what we have to keep in mind that when we are trying to consider the bar diagram, then this width, this width is not important and width of the bar is immaterial and this can be chosen arbitrarily. Only this length, this is important and this is going to represent the frequency, say absolute frequency or relative frequency. But one thing I would like to emphasize here that many times or rather most of the time you will see that whenever we are trying to create the bar diagram, the width of the bars are taken to be the same. That is just because the graph sh should look nice and one should not get an impression who does not know the theory of bar diagram, he should not get confused that why the widths are so different. So, that is the only reason, right. So, now in case uh, uh, we have a frequency distribution of our discrete data or a qualitative data that is converted into some uh, numerical value through some uh, proxy variables uh, like uh, yesterday we had given the values taste 
like a sweet will be denoted by 1, salty will be denoted by 2 and so on. So, similar to that, now we assume that we have this type of frequency distribution where these are my classes a1, a2, ak minus 1, ak. So, there are all together k classes and f1, f2, fk minus 1, fk, they are the frequencies or they are the absolute frequencies. So, they are simply going to represent that f1 number of values belongs to class a1, f2 number of values belong to class a2 and so on. And once they are divided by the total number of observations which is denoted by here n, total number of observations, then this third column this is giving us the value of relative frequency. So, f1 upon n this is the relative frequency of class a1, f2 upon n is the relative frequency of class a2 and so on. So, now suppose I want to create here a bar diagram, then this is the basic philosophy or these are the basic fundamental that first I need to create here x and y axis and on x axis I need to create here the bars. So, for example, if I say here I have a class here a1. So, this class a1 is going to be denoted by here some bar like this. So, this will denote here class a1 and similarly class a2 can be denoted by here another bar say here a2 and so on. There will be here a k. So, width of these bars like uh, this, this they can be same or they can be different, right. But it is always advised to have the equal width so that the bar looks better. And now, if you try to see the height of this bar on the y axis, this is somewhere here. So, this is going to represent the frequency or absolute frequency of the class A1. If I try to consider here class A2 here, then this height, this height is here somewhere here and this is going to denote here point F2. So, this is point here F1 and this is here point F2. And similarly here, this height here is proportional is actually see here F k. So, you can see here that the heights of the bar of bar is proportional to the frequency. Now, instead of frequency, one can also use the relative frequency. So, in that case, the f1 is going to be changed by f1 upon n and so on. So, these heights are going to represent only the relative frequency. So, now I have two options. I have this bar and the height of the bar is f1 or say f1 by n that is the absolute frequency or the relative frequency. The advantage of using the relative frequency is that, that the maximum value of the relative frequency is always 1. So, it become easier to compare the heights of the bar. So, in case if you see a diagram like uh, this one, a small bar and a higher bar. By looking at this diagram, I can always say that this has a lower frequency and this has a higher frequency. Suppose if I say these bars are going to indicate the number of shirts sold in a shop on a given day. So, I have now two shops and the sales are represented by the height of the bar. So, by looking at the height of the bar, I can very easily conclude that which of the shop is selling more number of shirts, right. Now, the question is this, how to create this uh, bar uh, diagram or say bar plot on, on the R software. In R software, we have a command here bar plot. This bar plot helps us in the construction of bar diagram. When we try to construct a graph, 
then there are many, many parameters. And you would like to handle those parameters so that you can get the outcome in the required format, which is more suitable to understand. And for that, we have different parameters. For example, if you want to create a graphics, then there will be x-axis, there will be y-axis. So you would like to put some desired labels on your x-axis and y-axis that what they are representing. You need to control the width of the bar. Different bars are representing different things. So you would like to add information inside the graph that which of the bar is indicating what. You would like to give different colors to the bar and there are many things that you can do. So when we try to use this command bar plots, then I have two options. In a simple language, I will say simple bar diagram and in, and in simple way, I will call the other option bar diagram with more options. So if you simply want to create a bar diagram, then I need to use this command bar plot and inside the arguments, I simply have to give here the data inside a variable called here as a height and that will work. So if I simply try to type bar plot and say here data vector, this will give us a simple bar diagram. But suppose you want to modify it, you want to improve it so that it looks better, then in that case, the detail command of the bar plot is here like this. And you can see here, this is the command here bar plot and this is here the argument. First value is nothing but the height which is here the data. Second is here width is equal to 1. So that is going to control the width of the bar. Similarly, there is here space, there is here names.arg, legion.txt besides equal to false, horizon and so on. You can see here that this is a long list. So next question comes, how you would learn all these things? I would suggest you more simple option is to take the help on the command bar plot. Because it is practically impossible to keep all the commands always in your mind. So best option is this, or is a free software that will always be available with you. Try to look into the help menu of bar plot. And there you will see that the interpretation of each and every parameter that is expressed inside the argument that is very well explained there. So whenever you need, you simply try to read that part and execute it. To make you comfortable, to make you understand, I will try to take here some option and I will try to add them one by one through two examples. But before that, in case if you really want to know or if you want to take the help from the bar plot, then how to do it? In order to do it, you simply have to use here the command help and inside the arguments, within the double quotes, you need to write bar plot. This syntax is not only for the bar plot, but this is for all the graphics or say all the commands. This is one of the way to obtain the detailed help. And now I will try to show you on the console, our console that how this happens and how do you get all this information. But before that, please try to have the look on this slide and the next slide. You will get the same information, whatever is mentioned here. You can see this is our uh, detailed knowledge and in the next slide, you have all the details like as what is represented by height, either a vector or a matrix of values describing the bars and so on. What is here the width? This is an optional vector of bar widths, space, the amount of space left before each bar, names.arg, this is a vector of the names to be plotted below each bar or the groups of bar and so on. And there will be a long list. So what you need to do, you simply read to read this help part and this will be your 
best teacher to understand what is really happening and based on that you can do the things right so you will see here now i try to copy and paste this command on the r console you can see here as soon as i will press enter this will come on the internet and a website containing the help on this bar plot will be opened this is one possible way. So, in order to use this type of help, you need to have an internet connection or else you can also go through the help menu over here inside the R software and then you can have a detailed thing. But here as soon as I say here enter, you can see here what is happening. You can see here that this internet site is opened here and actually this site or this command has taken you directly to the R server and on the R server you have the latest help whatever is documented that is available for you. So, you can see the advantage of this R you are getting the best possible help over here and you can see here if I try to scroll down you can see here that this part this is the same part which I had copied and pasted here and if you move further you can see here that there are different here argument like as here height and height is trying to give you the all this information something like this and if you scroll it more there is a detailed interpretation for the width and detailed inter interpretation for the space and so on you can see here this is a long list. So, now it depends on your capability that how much uh, you want to learn and how beautiful or how informative graphic you want to create right and you can see here I have simply copied and pasted this thing just to give you an idea right. So, now one very important aspect in bar plot whenever you want to construct the bar plot please decide you are constructing the bar plot on what on the individual data or on the categories? The answer is this we want to create a bar plot on the categories. For example, in case if you have data which has been categorized in two categories 1 and 2, suppose you have got 100 data values, would you like to plot those 100 values or you would first translate those 100 values into two categories? category 1, category 2 and based on that you will have here their frequencies or the absolute frequencies and actually we would like to plot the frequencies. So, first you need to input your data in the form of a frequency and the frequency can be obtained by using the command table. So, that is why suppose I have some data vector here x. So, if I want to create the bar plot using this command bar plot, then first I need to transform this data into a frequency table form using the command table and then I have to create the bar plots. Similarly, if you do not want to use the absolute value and if you want to use the relative frequency, then in that case the same command. has to be transformed and in this case what I will do that now I will try to operate the command bar plot over the table divided by length of x. We have learned that once we try to use this command this will give us a frequency table frequency distribution using the relative frequency. So, now I will try to create a bar plot on the data which is given by table x divided by length of x. So, why not to consider here a simple example and we try to see how these things are happening. So, now let me take a uh, very simple example. So, I have data of 10 persons and uh, we have recorded whether the person is graduate or non graduate. So, in case if a person is graduate then it is denoted by here g and if the person is non graduate it is denoted by here n. 
Now, so we have this data here G and G and and so on. So as we had discussed earlier, this data cannot be exposed to any statistical tool. We need to convert it into a number. So what we have done, we are giving this graduate a value 1 and a non-graduate a value 2. So now in this case, the person is graduate. So I am giving it here value 1. Then the second person is non-graduate. I am giving it value here 2 third person is graduate, I am giving here the value 1 and so on. So now I have a data which is here 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 1, 1, 2, double 1. This is my here data on which I would like to create my bar plot. So I try to store this data using the C command here in a variable here Q U A L I which is a, I have used the short form of qualification. So, you can see here I have entered this data and this will look like this and this is here the, the screenshot. Well, I will try to show you on the R console also. So, let us first try to go to the R console. First, let me create this data vector over here. Right, so you can see here this is here data. Now, please try to observe what is really happening. Now, I will say here, I have been told to use the command bar plot on this data to get the bar plots. So, I try to use here bar plot and this quality. Ah, now if you try to observe what are you getting here, do you think exactly do you want it this thing? For example, I will just copy and paste this graph over here. If you try to look at this graphic, you would realize that no, this is not matching what we wanted because this is giving me a graph of data 1, 2 and so on, right. This is giving me only here 2 values 1 and here 2. So if you try to look at the data, first 2 percent, this is here 1 and 2 and this is giving here first person here 1 and second person here 2 with 2. And then there are such 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Well, what is this? We could not want this thing. Well, this is the very common mistake what we always make while making this bar plots or say pie chart that I will show you later on that we directly expose the original data set. But what we have to do here, I need to first create the frequency distribution of this variable here quality and then I need to give here the command bar plot and now this is what I am trying to do here. You can see here now first I try to create the data of the frequency table using the table command on the data quality. This comes out to be here like this gender and then 1, 2 and here 7, 3. So that simply indicating that there are 7 percent which are graduate and there are 3 percent which are non-graduate. And then I am trying to use the command bar plot on this data, table calling. And now I am getting here this bar chart. You can see here this is bar number 1 and this is here bar number 2. So this bar number 1 that is representing the graduates and this is and the bar number 2 this is representing the non graduates. And by looking here you can see here at this height this is indicating that there are 7 persons the absolute frequency here is 7 and similarly here if you try to see this is here 3. So there are 3 persons. So, by looking at this bar diagram, I can very easily conclude that there are 7 persons which are graduate and there are 3 persons which are non-graduates. And in case if you see what is indicating here, this is here nothing but the frequency or the absolute frequency. And the width of this bars, width of these two bars say this is here width, this is here the width, this is the width here. They can be arbitrary, but anyway as I said 
it is nice to have the bars with equal width for the easy to understand graphics. Right. So, this is how we try to create this thing. Now, I will try to show you on the R console, but before that let me also show you here that in case if you want to create this bar diagram using the relative frequency, how are you going to do it? So, first I try to create the frequency distribution with the relative frequency. So, you can see here once I try to execute the table command on quali divided by length of quali, I get here this type of frequency distribution where this is indicating graduate category, this is giving me non graduate category and this 0.7 is actually 7 upon 10 and then 0.3 here is 3 upon 10 which is indicating the relative frequency of the two classes. And when I try to execute the bar plot command over this data, then I get this type of graph. But now you can see here, means again th this is my class A1 of say graduates and this is my here class A2 of non-graduates. So, this graph is exactly the same as the earlier one, but there is a difference here on the y axis. Now, you can see here these values are 0 0.0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 and so on. And this is here the height which is indicating 0 0.7 and this 0 0.7 is the same thing here like this. And this height of second bar A2, you can see here this is 0 0.3 and this 0 0.3 is the same thing which is coming here. So, this is how we try to create the bar plots, but now let me try to show you on the R console also how you are going to do it. So, now I would try to correct it and I would say I would like to make a bar plot of the table quali. So, if you try to see it here quali and then this you can see here now this is your here the graphic and this is here in the on the y axis you can see here where my cursor is this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 this is indicating the frequency. And if you try to use the same command with the length of quali, you can see here the graph. The graph remain the same, but now you can see here that, that on the y axis these frequencies have now changed and now they are relative frequencies. So, the height of this bar is simply proportional to the relative frequency. So, this is how we try to create the bar diagram. Now, let me take here one more example to make you understand better and so I have collected the data of say 100 customer. These 100 customers are visiting a shop and there are 3 sales persons and these 3 sales persons are indicated by numbers 1, 2 and 3, salesman number 1, salesman number 2 and salesman number 3. And when these customers enter into the shop, they are attended by a particular sales person. So, now which sales person has attended which of the customer, this data is recorded for the first 100 customers entering into the shop. And so, this data you can see here, this consists of the numbers 1, 2 and 3 only, 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3 and so on. So, now you can see here by this small data set, set consisting of 100 values, you can see this is only a say uh, no numbers, numbers and numbers, they are not giving you any fruitful information. So, my first attempt will be to make some suitable graphic to have this information. So, I would try to first attempt to create a bar diagram. So, I would uh, like to store all this data into a data vector here called sales per, which is a short form here sales person. All right. And now after this, if you try to make the same mistake here, if you try to make it here bar plot of here sales per, uh, you will not get here the correct information. Right. So, first let me try to show you these things on the R console also and we will move together. So, let me first try to create this data vector. So, I have created this data vector and you can see here now this is my data, right. And now, if I try to create here a bar plot of this thing, you can see here you are getting a graph like this one. Definitely you do not want this thing and yeah, I accept that I have made here a mistake. 
because the correct option is this I do not have to use the data directly, but I have to first create the frequency table. So, I would first try to create the frequency table you can see here looking at this 100 data values you are not getting much information, but by looking at these 3 values you are getting an information that there are 28 customers which are attended by the salesperson number 1, there are 43 customers which are attended by salesperson 2 and there are 29 customers which are attended by salesperson 3. Right. Now, I will try to create a bar plot over this thing. So, I try to write down here the command bar plot and inside the bracket I have to get the data and you can see here that this is giving me this bar plot. Right. And similarly, in case if you want to create this bar plot with respect to the relative frequency, then I need to modify the data vector s by length of sales person the data vector. And you can see here now in this case the frequency that was earlier as a 10, 20, 30, 40 and so on this frequency on the y axis is now changed to relative frequency. Right. So, the same thing I have copied and pasted here for your understanding and uh, then I will try to do something more on this thing. So, you can see here that uh, this is the same uh, bar plot that we have just obtained and similarly in case if you want to have this bar plot with respect to the relative frequency this is obtained here and now now i would try to add some features to this plot and suppose i want to give here a title so now you can see here this command this command is the same what we had used earlier. But now, in order to add a title on the graph, I am using here a command main equal to this and inside this double quotes, I am writing the title what I want, customers attended by sales person. And if you try to execute it, you will get here the same graph, but there you can observe that you are getting this title. So, the moral of the story is this that in case if you want to add a title on the graph use the command main and I will try to show you it on the R console also. And you can see here now we have this title added. Right. Now, let me try to do some more changes in this graph. Suppose I want to add here some legions and a title to this bar chart. So, first you try to look at this bar diagram. You can see here now I have added here a legion to the bar number 1 as a SP1 that is sales person 1, legion to bar number 2 SP2 sales person 2. Legion 2 bar number 3 SP3 and here I have added a title on the x axis and here I have added a title on the y axis. So, now we need to see that how these things can be done. Well, I will tell you the very simple way go to the help menu try to see what are the different parameters that can do the job. And they will also explain you how these values have to be given. Sometimes they are in some number, sometimes they are inside the double quotes. Please try to look from the help menu and try to use it. For example, here if you try to see this bar plot table and main commands, they are from my earlier plot. Now, I want to add here 3 names SP1, SP2 and SP3. Now, this help tells me that please try to give the names of the bar inside the double quotes whatever you want. So, I am trying to give you uh, give here 3 names SP1, SP2, SP3 inside the double quotes and which are separated by comma this is the format. And when I want to give a title on the x axis I have to use the command x lab equal to and inside the double quotes I have to give whatever I want to write. For example, I have given here sales person and inside uh, the bracket SP and this 
entire thing I want to print on the x axis. So, you can see here this is coming here and this sp1, sp2, sp3 this is coming here. And similarly, if I want to give a title on the y axis then, then the command is y lab. So, I have to write y lab equal to and whatever I want to give the title on the y axis I have to write it inside the double quotes and you can see here I have written number of customers and this is here. So, I can execute with this thing on the R console also and you can see the outcome which you are getting over here. Right, you can see here that there is no title, no legend so over here and now I am trying to execute it and you can see here that these uh, labels SP1, SP2, SP3 and uh, titles on X and Y axis they are added over here. Now, suppose I want to add some colors and I want to make this uh, bars of different shades, different colors, right. So, in order to add the colors, I will have to use one more command, this is here col and rest of the command that is simply the same as in the last slide. Now, if you try to see in order to add here colors, I am giving here col equal to, then I am trying to give here three colors, red, green and orange and these colors are given inside the double quotes. And remember one thing, red, green and orange, they are the reserved words. Reserved words means, once you try to write down red, green, orange, the R will also understand them red, green and orange and there is a list of different types of colors which R understands. So, you simply have to give these colors inside the bracket using the C command and the same order will be followed in your bar diagram also. For example, here in case of here red, this is red is coming here in the first, second place is green, this is coming here green, third place is orange, so orange is coming over here, right. So, let us try to do the same thing on the R console and let us try to see what do we obtain. So, you can see here now the, this is the same graphics, but now as soon as I execute it, these colors are added, right. Now, similarly, you can add many more things into the graphic to make it more informative and more useful and there is a long list, but definitely it is not possible for me to take all the issues in this lecture. But I believe that I have given you sufficient background to understand that it is not difficult at all to add different types of parameters and it is not difficult at all to create nice graphics using the R software which is completely free. So, you are creating all these graphics just for free. The only thing is this. Yes, you need to spend some time in learning it, but definitely in case if you have to spend some time in learning and you are saving a lot of money in from buying an expensive software to create all this graphic, I think it is not a bad bargain. So, you please try to have a look, try to take different data sets and try to create more graphics. And in the next turn, I will try to take more graphics and I will try to explain you all these features. So, you practice, enjoy it and I will see you in the next lecture again. Till then, goodbye.